composting toilets. The good, the bad and the ugly. Well, the subject of today's film is going to seem rather dull after all this talk of buried treasure and golden acorns and all that kind of stuff. Sorry about that. Let's talk about human waste. Simplicity. No plumbing is required at all. No plumbing required and you'll never, ever, ever block a composting toilet. You can put whatever you want into the composting toilet as long as it composts. Um, for instance, toilet rolls, uh, tea bags, coffee grinds. They all go in the composting toilet to compost down. Simply. Installation is basically a bucket, a toilet seat and a toilet lid. Now don't get me wrong, more complicated composting toilet systems do exist, but we went down the most simple route. We're crazy! We don't even separate solids from liquids. <laughs> There's a term, separating solids from liquids. Oh no, none of that for us. All our waste goes in the same old bucket. I mean, how much does a bucket cost? I made the toilet furniture out of Helena's old Jack Tatty bed and some scraps of wood I had left over from the build. Based on the three of us using a conventional water-based toilet system, we would consume 40,000 litres of water per year to flush our toilet waste away. Now that is crazy. Jesus God! And that would have been drinkable water. It's kind of difficult to put that quantity of water into context. I mean, what does, what does 40,000 litres 
of water look like. See this cube here? Okay. Well, that actually holds a thousand litres of water. So you'd need, or we would need, 40 of those for just one year's use of a conventional toilet. Nothing. So this is the nifty bit, because after our toilet waste has rotted down for two years, we can then feed our fruit trees with it. How amazing. And it doesn't cost us a penny, not a penny. Well, actually a bit of effort because I've got to kind of manhandle that, uh, that compost back to the orchard, but I'm going to uh, make some changes to avoid me having to do that. Because at the moment, we store all of the toilet waste way, way, way over there. Over that way, oh, you can't see my hand, way over there. But I'm gonna move it to just here, which is actually in the orchard, which kind of makes sense. So we can leave it there for two years, and then it's easy for me to spread underneath all of the fruit trees. I don't know why I didn't think of that before, really. Ah, <laughs> but hey-ho. It's all rotted down. There's no smell. Well, there is actually, but it kind of just smells of earth. But there's no trace of any undesirables within the compost. It just looks like loamy soil. It's fabulous. And the trees love it. Okay, so now moving on to the bad. The bad things about a composting toilet. Number one. Sawdust. You need sawdust for composting toilet to operate a composting toilet or some other kind of dry absorbent organic material. You could use chopped straw, dried grass, i.e. hay, dried and crushed leaves also work. But none of those are particularly convenient to store. Sawdust is. It's surprisingly compact and it can be quite heavy actually in quantity. But we use sawdust which is great and we've sourced a local supply of sawdust that will never run out because it's our local sawmill and they are happy to get rid of the stuff. So every three or four months we take our trailer and go and pick a load up. Hark! Here comes a tractor. Now, if everybody was to operate a composting toilet in this world, there would be a, a serious shortage of sawdust. So it's probably a good thing that it's only the, uh, the odd few of our dear population. And then instead of chopping down trees to make paper, there'd be chopping down trees to make sawdust for our toilets. Not good. Convenience. Oh, yes. We have to empty our toilet bucket between two and three times a week. In the summer months, in the warmer, drier months, that isn't too much of a challenge or too much of a chore. But in the winter, when it's cold outside and it's frosty, and it's raining and it's blowing a gale the last thing you want to be doing is walking outside with a bucket full of stuff and emptying it that isn't pleasant and the final issue for us is with our house guests because what we found is that people are all very curious and enthusiastic and supportive when we tell them that we operate a dry toilet. However, that enthusiasm soon begins to wane, should we say? 
I think wane's an appropriate word. Yes, wane. Once they stay over or they come for an evening meal, for instance, because then there comes a point where they realize they're actually going to have to use a composting toilet. And in their heads, I think, oh, I've got to do my toilet in a bucket. And once that starts to dawn, you can see kind of panic setting into people's eyes. They, they suddenly become very um, twitchy when any kind of mention of them possibly using a toilet should come up. We've got instructions glued up on the inside of the toilet door just to make people fully aware of how it works and what we do with the waste but that doesn't seem to make much difference. It's a shame. However, there is a double-edged sword to this little affair because this also means that we rarely, rarely have house guests overstaying their welcome because more often than not, they choose to hold their wee-wee inside until they get home. Fabulous. Well, I do hope that this film about our toilet has kind of either educated you or maybe helped make your mind up if you've been contemplating having a composting toilet. So, thanks very much for watching. Please do subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to this channel. And click the like button if you happen to like this film as well. So thanks very much and uh, I'll see you again soon. I'll, I'll leave you with the toilet paper.